Hello and welcome to my channel. In this one I'm going to show you how to draw an ant in charcoal. It's a small but interesting subject and it's going to be a full length video. No time lapse. I'm going to show you what the drawing process looks like in real time because I want to share with the regular YouTube viewers uh, the type of content that is normally available only on my Patreon. So let's have a look. So, uh, first, about the materials, I'm going to use charcoal pencils for the most part, some erasers, uh, blending tools such as a brush and tutelian. I'm going to use a graphite pencil for the sketch, and I'm going to need one more thing, and that's a piece of willow charcoal. Uh, now I think I have everything. The paper is the Fabriano sketching paper. It's about five times eight inches in size. It's a smaller drawing. And we're going to draw an ant. As for the reference, it's going to be in the description and you can also see it in the top uh, right corner over there. So we're going to start uh, drawing the sketch. Um, insects, their bodies can be divided into, into three larger segments the abdomen, thorax, and the head. I'm going to start with the abdomen here. And by the way, if you look at the reference, I'm going to make some changes to it because I don't really like the position of the legs, so I'm going to try to modify that a little bit. And I'm going to make some other minor changes in value and maybe simplify some things a little bit. So. You always have to need to you always need to make at least some adaptations when it comes to the reference photo. So now I'm drawing the thorax or the midsection if you will. Uh, I'm not drawing the legs just yet because it's simpler for me to draw these larger shapes first. And this middle part of the body kind of looks like a bridge between the head and the abdomen or the stomach. Now the stomach itself uh, consists of multiple segments as well because it's flexible. But I'll get to that eventually once I start shading it. Now I'm drawing the mandible. I'm going to simplify that bit a little bit. And... Um, the eye is going to be somewhere around here. Um, now I can maybe start drawing some of the legs. All of the legs are attached to the thorax area or that midsection area. Insects have six legs, and these hind legs appear to be the largest and the strongest. So I'm going to shape, uh, change the shape of the of the hind leg here, closer to us, closer to our viewpoint. And I'm going to make it touch the ground here, sort of. And then I'm going to draw the other one. I suppose I should say a few more words about my materials, even though I plan to talk about it a lot during this video, uh, because there is a lot to talk about, uh, about the way that I use these tools. But uh, the charcoal pencils I'm using are Master's Touch woodless charcoal pencils. I'm going to use two grades, medium and soft. For the sketch, I'm just using a regular graphite pencil, a Stadler HP graphite pencil. On to the second pair of legs here. For erasing, I'm going to use a kneaded eraser for the most part. I like to use a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser. They're very soft and um, 
sticky and fairly large as well so you get a lot of it and uh, for some of the more precision erasing where I want to use an eraser like a pencil I can use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser that's the white pencil thingy on the left next to my charcoal pencils and another drawing tool that I'm going to use is that piece of uh, char willow charcoal, that willow charcoal stick willow charcoal and vine charcoal is natural charcoal and it's soft and it's very easy to blend it's very easy to move around because it doesn't really stick to the surface of the paper as much as compressed charcoal does as much as compressed charcoal from your charcoal pencils and that's going to allow us to create some interesting painterly effect uh, effects when blending now uh, for blending I'm going to use a tutillion, a homemade tutillion rolled into a fine tip and also a flat brush. I'm going to talk about the brush because I'm going to use it quite a bit during the drawing process. I'm starting to work with charcoal pencils. At first I need to resharpen them. I'm going to start with a medium charcoal pencil. I'm going to put a piece of glassine paper under my hand just to minimize the smudging. And I'm going to start the main part of the drawing process. Now, one of the things I like about these woodless charcoal pencils is that I can sharpen them so easily. I can get a very fine tip. Not quite as good as graphite pencils. I can't really get lines that are that clean and that thin, but, you know, close enough. So I'm starting with one of the hind legs. Um, don't be surprised if I make some of the values a little bit darker in some places and if I make some of the details a bit darker and others a bit lighter in comparison to the reference. Um, the idea is to create contrast so that I can explain the shape of the insect to the viewer. So my whole drawing is going to be a bit darker than the reference so I hope you don't mind that. First because I'm working in charcoal and also because I'm gonna try to push that contrast in some areas and I can't really because I'm not working in color I can't really achieve um, the same range of colors I only work in gray tones so it's going to have to be a little bit simpler this particular ant kind of looks like uh, some of the forest ants um, that I can see where I live but I wouldn't know I mean I don't know that much about different breeds or different types of ants. I also used a touch of a soft charcoal pencil. The the one that I just laid down, the, the longer one, that's the soft charcoal pencil. Now if you're wondering what the difference is, the soft one is obviously softer but it's also a little bit darker. So it's it's the darkest thing that I have. Now for blending here I'm using um, I'm using that homemade tutillion. I can use it to go in, in into those smaller spaces where I really need more precision when blending. And you need to use blending tools because the pencil, it just um, it always creates a little bit of texture and it always leaves some parts of that um, of the paper of the area that you're working on 
it always leave, leaves uh, some of those smaller spaces, smaller gaps, which remain white. So you need to push the charcoal into them. It's uh, better to do that than to press harder with your pencil, because when you press harder, it's uh, difficult to fix if you make any mistakes. So here, because I want clean edges around these limbs, around these legs, I'm using a kneaded eraser. And the reason why I actually prefer to use a kneaded eraser here rather than the Tombow Mono Zero eraser is because Tombow Mono Zero eraser is just regular rubber eraser and if it uh, if you try to rub charcoal sometimes you can actually smudge it and bury it into the grain of the paper and then you can no longer make it completely white. So if you want to clean something up it's better it's better to use the kneaded eraser because you just gently dab on the paper and you can lift up the charcoal dust so uh, one part of the hind leg here which is uh, opposite of our viewpoint which is on the other side of the of the abdomen it's going to be hidden behind the abdomen and now I'm going to draw some lines here dividing the abdomen into segments because of uh, like I told you at the beginning while I was doing the sketch, from what I see, uh, the ant's abdomen also consists of several smaller segments, almost like ring-like shapes, I suppose, which makes it flexible, and uh, that reminds me of, of the kind of abdomen that we can see on bees. For example, I did a drawing of a bee a few months ago, except for the fact that uh, an ant doesn't have a sting at the end of the uh, at the end of that belly, or it, it doesn't have, as far as I know, it doesn't have one. So I moved this hind leg here, the, the one which is closer to our viewpoint in front of the the abdomen. I moved it a little bit down and a little bit forward because the the position of the ant's body looked a little bit unnatural to me so I decided to change it a bit and here the challenge will be to create contrast between that leg and the rest of the abdomen so uh, what am I going to do with that I'm gonna make this leg a little bit lighter because it is also lighter in my reference it seems that the the hind leg which is closer to us is closer to the light source as well and the one which is on the other side of the abdomen is uh, facing away from the light source which is why it's darker so I, I made it even darker because I wanted to increase that contrast but I'm going to make this one a little bit lighter than, than is in the reference because I will want to create contrast with some of the darker bits of that abdomen area. Now, the abdomen is very interesting for shading and I'm going to tell you why. You can see there is this shadow area here going down the middle of the abdomen and the top part of the abdomen or, or the, uh, the top side of the abdomen which is facing up is obviously lighter. It's the lightest part of the abdomen because it's facing up, facing towards the light source. But the interesting thing is that uh, once I go past this darkest area, which, I now, which I'm now doing with the soft charcoal pencil, that lower part, which is uh, facing down, gets a little bit lighter, as you will see. And the reason why it gets a little bit lighter is because of the reflected light from the floor. Now to do some uh, lighter shading I'm using a piece of willow charcoal and willow charcoal is a, wonderful, is, a, is a wonderful tool to use in combination with charcoal pencils and now you'll see why. I did the darker bits using my charcoal pencils especially that soft charcoal pencil which I needed for some of those darker bits of the, of the abdomen and then I just added a little bit of that willow charcoal for some of the lighter areas. And now I'm going to start blending with a brush. Now, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just pushing 
that charcoal dust gently all the way to the edge of my sketch, all the way to the edge of the abdomen. And this is easy to do when you have the right type of brush. Uh, when I say the right type of brush, the brand doesn't really matter. I'm mostly talking about the shape of the brush. I prefer to use smaller flat brushes with a narrower tip, like the one that I'm using here. And the reason why this is so good for blending is because you can use that flat tip and point it towards the edge when you're pushing the charcoal dust and that way you can work your way all the way to the edge and no further. So you can basically create a clean edge while blending at the same time and you can see that here the edge of the abdomen is indeed very very clear. And I'm going to do the same thing on the lower side. And another thing that I've accomplished is I've created a gradual transition from uh, that area of darker value, which I laid down with a soft charcoal pencil, and the area of lighter value at the top. which is facing up towards the light source. You can also see the edges between those segments of the abdomen. However, I'm going to need to um, emphasize that using erasers, which I'm going to do in a minute. But first, a little bit more blending here. I always worry about those clean edges because it's important to explain to the viewer where the object ends and the background begins. Sometimes you can create some blurry edges when you, when you want to create some out of focus effects. Sometimes uh, you don't have clean edges when you have a softer transition depending on the type of the shape you're looking at. But here when we're talking about the edge of the main subject's body, there needs to be a clean edge between the background and the main subject. Now, I'm going to do some cleaning up. And what I like about kneaded erasers, in, a, in addition to the fact that they just lift up charcoal and they're very good for cleaning up, is the fact that you can just reshape them and create a smaller shape for erasing. You want to, if you want to create a blade-like shape, you can do that. If you want to create a teardrop shape, you can do that easily with just a few, uh, with just a, a little bit of um, kneading. Now I want to add some highlights to this abdomen. It's a very smooth reflective area I think almost like a type of an armor. And I'm just lifting up a bit of charcoal in those areas where I need those um, where I need those catch lights, those reflections. And you can see as I'm doing that how much more three-dimensional the abdomen is becoming. Because whenever you have a nice range of value, that part of the body or that thing that you're drawing, the, the object that you're drawing, will start to appear more three-dimensional. You will achieve more depth. Now I will try to draw some more of those highlights, but this time I'm using a slightly different approach using a Tombow Mono Zero Eraser and just dragging it because I want to create a slightly different effect with less contrast. And another thing that I want to do is I'm going to draw a lighter line here between the segments 
to emphasize that edge between those segments of the abdomen. And another thing that I need to do is make this hind leg stand out against the abdomen. So if you want the viewer to be able to understand where one shape ends and the other one begins, you always need value contrast. And you usually need clean edge to value. So now, by taking away a bit of value, I made the leg stand out against the abdomen, and now I'm pulling some lighter marks at the bottom of the abdomen, the bottom side of the abdomen, because I need it to be a bit lighter. Why do I want it to be a bit lighter when the light source is coming from above? Because the surface below is going to be reflecting light onto the lower part of the ant's body, onto the lower side of the abdomen. And that is why the lower side of the abdomen is going to be a bit lighter because it's being illuminated by that reflected light from down below. There are so many of these tiny details that you need to pay attention to if you want to create a realistic looking drawing. And the funny thing is that the viewer has uh, the viewer who doesn't really know much about drawing, they can still understand whether something looks realistic or not, even when they have no idea about the thought process that the artist goes through. Because when you're drawing something as complex as this, and, and I know this is not super complex, but it's still a fairly detailed realistic drawing. You make thousands of decisions along the way. You're always thinking to yourself, how can I, I interpret this, what I see, how can I explain it to the viewer? And um, you come up with solutions, naturally. Now, this abdomen, at the very end, at the very tip, it seems to end with some sort of... Um, I don't know, something that almost looks like a bit of a spike, but it's very short. I don't really know what it is. Um, I'm moving on to the other leg here. Uh, this is one of the middle legs. This one is behind the hind leg. I'm changing the position of that as well. I'm going to make it stick out a little bit more to the right so that so the the hind leg and that middle leg don't overlap so again i'm making some changes in order to be able to explain the shapes to the viewer a bit better i don't know how successful i will be but like i said those are just some of the decisions that i'm making along the way you don't have to stick to your reference photo the reference photo is merely a guide, sometimes it can be just like a general idea, but the final product has to be something of your own, even when you're doing a simple realistic drawing of an insect. All right, so that's the third leg, three more to go. But before I get on to the others, I'm going to have to do a little bit more of the thorax area. By the way, I'm calling this entire midsection area the thorax. I don't know if that's the proper term. I think it is, because I think I do know a little bit more about insects than an average person, but I might be wrong. Anyway. This is the part where the leg, the, the hind leg, joins that midsection area. And I'm not really sure if I understand the anatomy quite uh, well, but these parts of the legs kind of look like 
joints, I suppose. I see some similarities with the human anatomy, like for example the shoulders, the, um, the forearm, the uh, area, the, the bicep, and things like that. So, most living things have at least some things in common in terms of their anatomy. Moving on to the other, other middle leg because I have three pairs of legs. So I did the hind legs. Now I'm moving on to the to the other middle leg. Um, so when it comes to cleaning up the edges, you can see that I'm using basically. Mm, three things essentially. The first thing that I'm using is sharp pencils. So that's the first thing that I need. That's why I need pencils that can be sharpened pretty well and I need to resharpen them fairly often. The second thing that I'm using is brushes, flat brushes, uh, where I can push the charcoal dust to the edge. And the third measure that I'm using, of course, is erasers, cleaning up with erasers, which is a final touch, for example. If I go over the edge somewhere, like for example, now I'm shading the thorax, first with the willow charcoal, then spreading that with a brush. And if I go over that edge here and there, that's okay. I'm just going to go back in with a needed eraser, clean up the edge. And I can also use the uh, tutelion instead of a brush to push the charcoal all the way to the edge. Sometimes I will choose that, sometimes I will choose the brush. I like to use all of the tools that I have at my disposal now. Uh, in most of my videos I recommend that you should check out my other videos and I have to remind you again to do that in this case as well because um, not only is it good for my channel, <laughs> obviously, but also you can find other videos uh, where you can learn things that are relevant to this particular drawing process. Like, for example, I have a video on how to make tutelions, and I'm going to put that in the end screen at the end of the video. And I also have an interesting video about blending tools for charcoal, and they're different effects and uses. I'm going to put that in the end screen as well. You should check that one, uh, that one out as well because it's a slightly longer video where I go into detail about how different blending tools behave when you use them with charcoal. So I need to do a little bit of cleaning up around the legs before I move on to the uh, Uh, to to the rest of, of this middle leg and there are also some tiny details to be added here on the thorax area uh, when I look at the reference and by the way uh, I usually um, have a reference on my iPad uh, on my drawing desk and I can change the zoom easily now when I look at the reference this part of the midsection it almost looks like it's mm, semi-transparent in some places. I guess it's just the type of the material that uh, the, the thorax is made of. I'm not really sure. But it also has some reflective areas uh, where, I, where I'm going to want to pull some highlights with an eraser. The legs definitely appear darker than this midsection area, so I'm going to use a charcoal pencil here and I'm going to press a little bit more boldly, at least until I reach this um, tip of the leg. The legs themselves, they consist of multiple segments. So the, the, the first part is 
the joint area, which look, kind of looks like a shoulder, which is attached to the thorax or the midsection. Then there is a slightly longer and thicker part of the leg, which I'm working on now, which kind of looks like a thigh on a human leg. And then there is a thinner part. And I'm going to go over that with a brush again. And I'm just um, softening those marks with a charcoal pencil a little bit to make them look smoother. And then this final bit, which also consists of multiple segments, it almost looks like um, a hand or a foot, I suppose, but with only one finger, or maybe just a couple of fingers. I can't really tell. But I do see some similarities with human anatomy. Because when you're, when you're drawing something like this, you're always kind of trying to compare it with something you already know. So I'm adding some minor details here that I can see in the reference, even though I can't really make out what all of it means. But And also this dark shape here at the top of the thorax area, that's what we can see from the, the other front leg, because it's behind the body, it's on the other side, obviously. Now I'm going to draw uh, the, the front leg and the, the first part of it is rather massive, kind of looks like a huge shoulder or, may, or maybe a bicep, I'm not really sure because um, the way that ants' legs bend is a lot different than human limb, uh, limbs. But ants are incredibly strong insects, as you probably know, because they can lift um, things that are huge in comparison to their own weight and size. They're also tireless. And they can build and create some interesting things They're very fascinating creatures uh, when I was a kid I have to admit I would often kill ants for no reason at all I really regret it now and I can't really explain why I did that But nowadays, I really tend to avoid it as much as possible. And I think that an ant is also a very interesting subject to draw. You can see, if you've been following my channel, you can see that I've done a number of drawings of insects. I'm going to put some of those in the end screen as well if you want to check them out. So I did this top part of the thorax area again using a piece of willow charcoal. Just blended it with a brush a little bit. And the fascinating thing about working with willow charcoal is how easy it is to move it around and control the amount of value you can make it darker or lighter it's almost like uh, working with watercolor now if you want to make it darker you can use uh, a couple of different approaches you can just add compressed charcoal from your charcoal pencil on top and that will make it darker obviously or you can just add more willow charcoal and then push that around making a gradual more subtle transition in value 
Now I see some smaller different shapes within this segment here. But like I said, there's only so much I can understand from my reference, so I'm just going to simplify and approximate, which is what I do most of the time. In case I haven't uh, said anything about the paper, the paper I'm working on is uh, Fabriano sketching paper. And what I like about this paper is that it feels nice to work with charcoal on it because, I don't know, its texture is neither too smooth nor too rough and it just works with charcoal. I'm starting to work on the eye. The eye itself has a bit of a catch light, but it's very subdued, so it's not going to be very bright. But I still need to find a way to explain to the viewer that th this eye is a fairly round object, fairly round part of the body. And the antenna here is going to be a little bit tricky to draw. So the one that is on the other side of the head, facing away from us, from us, is going to appear shorter because of the angle and foreshortening. And the one which is closer to us, obviously, is going to be a lot more defined in terms of detail and it's going to appear larger and longer. So when you're making these adaptations to the reference, like for example changing the position of the legs and things like that, you need to keep in mind uh, what the change of position will do to the shape of the leg. So you need to keep angles and foreshortening in mind. And it doesn't have to be super precise, super accurate, but uh, you do need to keep these things in mind. And, and as long as you can get it to look as close as uh, possible to, to something that looks real, I think it'll trick the eye of the viewer and it'll be fine. Now I'm going to do some more shading on the head itself, again using a piece of willow charcoal. Willow charcoal is a very useful tool here for me because I don't want to do all of this work with a charcoal pencil and even though uh, willow charcoal is very soft and it looks like maybe uh, it will be easier for me to get clean shapes and clean edges uh, with a charcoal pencil. Actually, it wouldn't because uh, I could just use my brush and push all the way to the edge of the outline of my sketch and I can just keep a clean edge that way. If I just go over it, it's very, very easy to erase, which is not really the case with uh, charcoal pencils because, because compressed charcoal is obviously quite a bit more difficult to erase. And I also have to change the angle uh, of blending with a brush. Sometimes I have to um, change the position of my hand and sometimes I even have to rotate the drawing, which I haven't done so far but I, I will have to do it eventually if I want to get nice clean edges because it's not always comfortable to work with a brush and at the same time avoid or minimize smudging. That paper under, under your hand, the piece of glass in paper that you can put under your hand, it helps but only a little bit because there will always be some smudging when working in charcoal. Now this top part of the head appears to be of darker color but at the same time it's facing up towards the light source so I can't make it that much darker. And again the lower part of the head which is facing down is catching light from below so because of that reflected light it's not really that much darker than the top part of the head. And I also need to go around the edge of the eye here to make sure uh, that the eye really stands out against the rest of the head as a separate round object. Uh, a 
little bit more blending here now that I have applied charcoal pencil on top here to blend it into the lighter area. And then I'm just going to drag that down towards this bottom side which like I said appears lighter because of the reflected light and because of the lighter color and of course I'm going to have to finish that by using an eraser but I'm just going to uh, do the rest of the mandible here The mandible is those uh, those large jaws, but of course their size and shape varies a little bit uh, depending on the type and the role of the ant in the society. Because the the just the regular workers, the regular drones, whatever they're called, uh, they have smaller heads and smaller mandibles. The soldiers they obviously are armed with larger heads and larger mandibles just adding a little bit more value and defining the edge of this eye a little bit better because I really need that detail to stand out a bit more against the rest of the shape of the head You can see how much there is to talk about even when you're doing a simple subject such as this one. I'm just trying to lift up a little bit of value here on the head to create some highlights. I started with a kneaded eraser but now I think I'm going to need the Tombo Mono Zero eraser just to pull a few lighter strokes because I feel the Tombo Mono Zero eraser will be more convenient here. Just gonna add some lighter shapes to the head. So like I said at the beginning, this is the full length video and this is what the full length videos look like on my Patreon. I know that sometimes people complain that some of my videos are a little bit too fast for them. I honestly I tend to upload a lot of longer videos because I want regular folk on my YouTube channel to be able to to see longer videos but uh, they're not real-time videos, they're not full-length videos and uh, this is what full-length videos look like so they are done at a much slower pace and it's easier to follow along and it's also easier for me to explain every single detail and every single aspect of the drawing process uh, from the uh, choice of the reference to my approach and the way I adapt to the reference to my tools how I use my tools and all of that Because I know how a lot of people on YouTube feel, um, they feel like um, they support me with their views and comments and I just um, don't want to show them all of the content, but obviously nobody wants to work for free. So I have to make those longer videos exclusive to Patreon, but there's no reason why I shouldn't upload at least some of that longer content here on YouTube as well. So I hope you'll like it and I hope that some of, you, some of you will find it useful. In this stage as you can see I'm mostly refining some details on some of the areas which I already shaded and 
cleaning up the edges both around uh, the the whole subject and also the edges of some of the smaller shapes within the body of the main subject. And I'm also going back in and adding a few touches of darker value using a soft charcoal pencil because that creates some extra depth. That increased range of value makes everything even more three-dimensional. All I have left to do now is the two front legs. Obviously more of the one on the right will be visible because it's facing our viewpoint and the other one is kind of on the other side and much of it is obscured by the ant's body. So that one will be easier to do. The entire drawing process was about an hour long. I did very little editing. I just edit out some parts where I, where I need to find the right tool or maybe do some sharpening or uh, when I'm interrupted or anything. But I, uh, when I do these full length videos I rarely do any work off camera. Sometimes there is a little bit of work off camera, maybe a few adjustments here and there, but it's usually just a minute or two of unrecorded drawing process, so most of it is captured on camera. So as you can see, I, I'm doing the front legs and I, I'm just, I just needed to add a little bit more value to this part of the thorax this neck area if you will because it's in the shadow and now I'm gonna have to rotate the drawing a little bit because it's just more comfortable for me to work on the edges this way because the the thing about flat brushes is that when you want to keep an, an edge clean you have to point the tip of the flat brush towards the edge that way you're working to the edge and not over the edge all right so that way it's a lot easier to keep the edges clean but um, if you want to create a blurry edge you'll just do the opposite I suppose but in order to do that I have to rotate the drawing every now and then I just softened that a little bit with a brush and I added a touch of darker value with a soft charcoal pencil and now I'm just gonna do a bit more dabbing with a brush and a bit more cleaning up with a kneaded eraser. And maybe a few more strokes with this Dumbo Mono Zero Eraser. I'm just going to resharpen my medium charcoal pencil and draw the rest of these fine details. The rest of the front legs here, or one front leg. So I'm drawing the rest of the front leg and just a few more segments here, like I said. This kind of reminds me of some aspects of human anatomy, but obviously it's 
a little bit simpler, or that's the way it seems to me. I'm just going to go over it gently with a brush to soften that line. If I go over the edge a little bit, I'm just going to clean it up with a kneaded eraser. A little bit more rotating because I need to make sure that I'm creating clean edges while blending. And then a little bit of cleaning up with a kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser doesn't leave any residue so it's easier to clean up and there are also some places here between the legs and between the abdomen and the midsection where I also need to do a bit more uh, a bit more of cleaning up. Um, now as a final touch I want to add a little bit of shadow because I don't want the ant to look like it's hanging in midair. I want it to look like it's standing there on some sort of a surface. So I'm adding some light shadow and the shadow is very light. It's barely there. And there's mostly shadow next to the part of the body which is touching the floor. Especially here under the abdomen area because obviously it's thicker and wider. And also maybe just a little bit under the legs. So it's basically not even a well-defined shadow, it's more like a suggestion of a shadow, but I think it will be enough to give this drawing a bit more context, a bit of depth, and to make it a bit more realistic and three-dimensional. This part needs to be just a little bit lighter because there's no reason for this darker shape. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of charcoal by dabbing my brush onto another darker area and then just pull it to the other side because this part of the shadow where the abdomen is touching the floor or is almost touching the floor needs to be a bit darker so I'm just going to pull that away creating a lighter shadow to the right. Just a little bit of work on the edges here. <clears throat> so the drawing is now done. I uh, put my signature in the lower right corner and that's it. I hope you enjoyed the drawing process. Don't forget to check out my other videos for more content. You should check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.